friends, this is the third in my series on this Steinway Model K from 1917. I picked this up about a month ago for $200 and $550 of moving expense. It's actually in very good shape except that it has some specific problems. The first part I diagnosed those problems. The second part I cleaned the ivory keys which were quite dirty. In this part we're going to begin the process of figuring out how to fix the uh, mechanical problems that it has on approximately 10 keys or so. I've already uh, figured out how to take this apart so I'm going to show you what I've learned on that. It's actually quite simple. They have a clever system that uh, amounts to mostly being gravity based. There's a lid we can flip up. There's a latch in each side. Have to put the front lid down. And this whole panel lifts out as, a, as one piece. I'll show you that separately. Scooter, are you going to help in this video? Lucy and Scooter both want to help. So with the latches unlatched, uh, we can take out the whole front panel as one piece. There it is revealing the mechanism that I showed in my first video. I put uh, green tape on all the keys that had problems. So with that main panel removed, we can just pull out this second panel, which includes the, uh, the lid for the keys, basically. It's got some pegs on each side that hold it in place under the weight of the top panel. The way this is attached, we've got these four hand screws, and it sits in in little pedestals, four corresponding pedestals. Some actions that I've seen online have a, a kind of a self-supporting second pair of feet behind, but this one doesn't, so I don't think it would stand up on its own without an explicit frame to mount it in. So that's going to be part of the project here is building a frame for this to kind of live in while I work on it. Another option is to uh, work on one key at a time. You can take out the hammer mechanism for each individual key. But I'm going to do enough work on this that it probably makes sense to make a simple frame for it, which I'm going to build out of 2x4s. I found these two large screws in it, which were only about halfway screwed in. I'm not sure these are the original screws. So there was one on each end of the piano, including this area. I was able to uh, remove those by hand without even using a screwdriver. So those two screws hold the rest of this in place that I'm about to take out, uh, which is held mostly in place by just the weight of the other pieces I've already taken out. There's a screw on each end that kind of holds it together as one assembly. There we go. At this point it's easy to lift out any individual key. Here you can see some lead weights that were embedded in the key to even out the uh, playing of the action. That's one of the things you're getting in a Steinway piano is a lot of careful attention to uh, getting the action to work perfectly. This one has a number written on it, 27, which is stamped here. 
so that's easy to put back in. Just gonna slide it under there. Here's something I mentioned in my first video when I did a survey. One problem that's been obvious from the start is this C above middle C, which I believe is BC5, has a noticeably raised key top here. And I th thought that that might have been too thick on the ivory or something, but it turns out it was just glued badly. So that'll be project that we work on later on but at this point it's just kind of an additional data point that I can file away for uh, future reference now that I've got everything taken apart. I'm going to be taking some measurements of the action here these support points four on the bottom and four on the top so I can build a little frame that will uh, hold this up right and also that I can spin it around and work on it from either side. I'm going to take out these four nuts and uh, lift the mechanism out next. Here's part of the sustain pedal mechanism. The other piece is missing. We have resonance on all these undamped springs. Let's see if I can sing a note. I think I was a little flat. See how nicely that lingers in this wonderful old piano. Here you can see the uh, the key mechanisms. They're normally pushed down at this point by the action, which pushes them up at this point on the keyboard. So we can make those move by sort of manually lifting the key. It's kind of remarkable that that's all the that key on a piano actually does is move this rod up and down. Here are the little pedestals where the front of the action set in and of course our retaining screws at the top. The sustain pedal rod goes over here in some form. I'll have to figure that out. I might even have it backwards the way it's sitting right now. But that gives you an overall idea of the uh, interior of the piano. You can see aside from possibly a dusting everything is in excellent shape here including the serial number on top of the what must be the original paint. So that's quite impressive. 4093 ebonized that might be a finish number I've uh, seen that on one of the one of these other pieces that same number 4093 so for those of you who are engineers you might appreciate an impulse response test we're going to just wrap on the side of this with my knuckle and hear all the wonderful sound that comes out Notice that the wrapping sound is lower here in the lower section, even though maybe those are about a fifth apart, is kind of a guess. Guys, want to help me wrap this up? Well, that ends our video for today. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.